Christians and sex. Join me, Keith, weeknights at 9 p.m. For thought provoking conversations on Christianity and sexuality. Let's talk about it. Why not? Enrich your love life by ensuring your Christian lifestyle is blooming. Hey, welcome, welcome to Christian and Sex. Uh, this is a key to entrepreneur, and I'm particularly bringing this segment because uh, of my own experience as a Christian uh, who grew up in church, practically born in church, um, and I've uh, grown to see how it has, it has affected my life personally. And, and I saw how some of the rules and regulations that I've been through myself and struggles, um, looking for answers, and uh, how I was impacted by that, being a church kid. And so it was well, some years ago, I felt inspired uh, to bring about a, a, a topic that would you know, evoke, um, uh, I, I would say, questions and, and, and hopefully enlighten uh, you, the, the listener, um, on how one goes about their Christian life um, as it pertains to the gospel and dealing with sexuality. So on this segment here, I'm excited to, to um, talk about um, this particular issue. Uh, we talk about how sexuality has evolved in the 21st century, right? and how it has affected or impacted the message of the gospel. That's basically, that's the theme, the theme of this uh, segment. So I'm excited and I can remember, I was about 19 years old and I went to a retreat. We had, a, it's called a Winterfest. We had it for all teenagers. And um, we had about maybe three or 4,000 teenagers there. And of course, at one part of this segment, we had a panel of this uh, uh, of uh, men, women and men, and we were talking about issues um, that were relating to relationships. And all the questions that were asked was very safe and very guarded. And I could tell because the environment was such that, you know, you don't say or do some certain things within, within a church setting. So as I watched and I, I listened to questions that were asked, one particular gentleman got up, and he was the youth director of New York City. You know, it was it was a bit of a revolutionary, very, um, uh, you know, very, uh, I would say, big on young people and big on just having them grow. And he got up and said, hey, what about horny? Who said horny anymore in the church? Who says sex? Why, why can't we use those words? Why can't we, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you feel horny, what do you do? I was like, whoa, I was like, that's, that's refreshing to hear that. And um, as, he, as he mentioned that, the room got very quiet. And I said, wow. Um, so that left the impression on me that there are people who, are, who have thoughts and feelings and, and about their sexuality and, and how they, they have to navigate their Christian lives and what they hear from the pulpit, what they hear from you know, people who are say older and probably a lot more reserved and and how they navigate themselves you know dealing with the world that's open and, and things that are coming at them left right and center and they're not sure how to really you know navigate themselves um i remember also leaving the this retreat but the last day i picked up a book and this book was about um dating um christian dating and that book really impacted my life so here in this series, we have two wonderful guests. Uh, we have um, 
Dr. Wisdom, Sonia Wisdom, um, and she'll be sharing uh, on the issue and um, some of her uh, uh, experiences as a young lady who grew up in church, uh, pretty, you know, centered around rules and regulations and, and how she, you know, was able to transform her way of her thinking uh, by, you know, looking to the Bible for herself and, and asking the Holy Spirit to help to guide her in these issues. We also have, um, we also have uh, Minister Richard, uh, someone I know from my local church. Um, he runs the men's department. Uh, very candid gentleman. He speaks out. He's very, um, I would say, transparent. Um, and he will be sharing as well uh, with, with, with you. And I think we're going to have a great show. So again, welcome to Christian and Sex on Yumi Radio at yumiradio.com. This is Keith, the entrepreneur. Let's begin. Yes, sir. Good to have you, Richard. Um, Sonia, as well. Yeah. I can see you as well. Okay, here we go. Hi, Richard. Good yeah. evening. Good evening, Miss Sonia. Yeah. Yes, That's my, yes. Brother, my brother's name, you know, so. Oh, wonderful. Oh. <laughs> strong, okay. strong name, strong name. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. It is. Sure, and a strong name. So we're going to have a good time here, uh, folks. We're going to be discussing a very, I think, important and, and timely topic. And um, we're going to be, um, I would say, candid about it. And, and hopefully, uh, at the end of this, this, uh, this program here, we're going to have, I would say, touch some lives, some men, some women across the globe. Um, um, how we as Christians, you know, how we look at sexuality and how we look at um, being effective uh, Christians in, in this world that is so sexualized and so um, big on image and, and performance. And uh, we're going to definitely have a, have a good time. So uh, the topic today is pretty much um, how sexuality has evolved in the 21st century. And um, we're, going, we're going to be talking about that. But my name is Keith, the entrepreneur. You might have seen me online doing my thing. And um, I'd like to have Richard Smith. And we have Dr. Sonia Wisdom. And we just want to hear a little bit about both of you, um, some of you, your background as far as a, a family man or a man before family came along and um, a man in the church and how you how you look at this topic and how you like to uh, listen a little bit about you as a man of God. Uh, good evening, everyone. Name is Richard Smith, or as my mother says, Richard Simmet. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was born in, uh, in the islands in uh, Jamaica, Kingston, to be exact, Duane Park. Uh, but I came up here as a boy and was educated here, went to uh, junior high school, high school, uh, Brooklyn Tech High School, architecture, city college, architecture. And then I did some master's work up at Alliance Theological. Um, mm. Been married for 22 years. I have three wonderful sons. I was mm. uh, called into ministry at the age of 19 and set forth as a minister at the age of 24. Um, and I, right now what I currently do as my pro financial profession is I design and build church, well, houses of worship, uh, not just churches anymore, because I'm doing a, a Hindu temple, but I, mm. I, design and, I design and build houses of worship uh, throughout New York City that involves various uh, aspects of architecture, design, development, and actual construction. Uh, at my church, I had the men's group. The, uh, the the men's ministry, the business ministry, and help out in some other areas. So that's a quick uh, kind of synopsis of who I am. Awesome, awesome. I, I like that. And Dr. Wisdom. Good evening, everyone. My name is actually Dr. Sonia True Wisdom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, too, was born in Jamaica under the clock. And um, as they would say, 
but I moved, I migrated to England and spent a lot of my formative educate years and um, undergraduate education and then came to the U.S. to do my Masters of Divinity on British bred and American employed. Um, I, I have been married for what, four years? So that means that I've been a single for a long time. Won't tell you how old I am, but I, I understand mm -hmm. singlehood. I'm now learning to live the married life. Um, my profession, I've, my profession is a chaplain and also a, a pastor, a church planter. I've been a minister, since, a credential minister in the church of God since 1992 and um, have been in New York since late 93. So that's been quite a while. Hmm, all right, sounds good. Now, um, hey, I, I, I think I'm mean, here some rich background here, some rich experiences here, and I, I know that it's gonna be very beneficial to, to, um, to, to, the, to the conversation here. Now, um, I was inspired to do a show uh, as such, and it, I, the title of it is, Christians and sex. Now, the reality is that, you know, I, 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 I learn in life that, that we try to separate our spirituality a lot from our sexuality. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I believe it has caused some conflict in our lives. And of course, we've had bad teaching and we have had ignorant teaching and we've had um, well-meaning people who just didn't uh, furnish us with the correct information. Mm -hmm. And some did their best, and some were good, of course. But with all of that, we are learning. It's a constant learning, uh, learning for us. Um, so this, this is, a, I think, a, a, a well-needed subject um, to be spoken of or to, or to be talked about. And again, uh, like I said, the object of this, this show is to explore relationships between um, Christianity or sexuality based on the Christian lifestyle and our belief systems. You know, we'll be exploring our sexuality and uh, how it impacts or affects us as we advance in our, you know, our spiritual life. Um, you know, people from Christian community, those who are single, maybe dating, courting, and married, those who are celibate, divorced, uh, um, those with no label. I mean, we have those people too, it's, it's kind of crazy, but we do have those. Um, just to, just to have a personal responsibility to protect their sexuality. Um, the health um, the claim, looking at um, reproductive health rights, and therefore we are looking at sex as Christians, um, how we must evolve, um, evolve um, to ensure our own happiness, and that you know, our young you know, comes up as Christian and they, they know how to find their way themselves because you know the young, the young people are getting so many mixed messages these days and a lot of them are lost they're confused they're trying to find the identity and and um and so they they're, they're need for direction and, and so forth uh, we'll be looking at the taboos myths beliefs secrets practices and issues around the topic um uh you know we have you know from helpful to harmful information Practices and behaviors, you know, as such, that can that can negatively affect outcomes. So the ultimate goal of this of this show is to increase the, the children of God's awareness, knowledge, and of course, you know, um, um, and of course, ways that we can affect our lives outcome positively. All right. Uh I, I would like you to clarify something for me before we go further. Um, what do we mean by Christianity? Um, I think that's just something that we need to understand. Are we talking about Christianity in terms of a blanket religion? Or are we talking about Christianity in, in terms of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Because I don't see them as one and the same. And what we understand about that going forward will determine even um, how we, I know for myself, how I talk about the subject given. And uh, mm. thank you so much, Doctor. I agree. I 
thousand percent. I had two comments uh, based on uh, our brother Keith's opening monologue. One was that, and the second was I wanted to get a different. A di his we keep he he's mentioned Keith. You mentioned several times sexuality. I mm -hmm. wanted to get a, a clarification of what you mean when you say when you use the word sexuality. Uh, right. So absolute. What was it that how you define the context of Christianity? And how do you define in the context of this dialogue uh, sexuality? Well, sexuality in this case, uh, for me, would it, it, it is really looking at um, not just a lifestyle, but as a, as a being how we're made. Um, a, a big part of our of our, our humanity um, ties into our sexuality, and 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 so forth. I think that you no, know, there because of, of I would say taboos or stereotypes, it has clouded what the real essence of who we are and, and is supposed to be. Um, feelings, how do we treat those feelings? Um, urges, um, what is correct, what is not correct? Um, based on what we know and we, we're taught, what are the appropriate behaviors and what are not appropriate behaviors? Um, because we see sexuality comes out not only in our right. personality, you know, the way we dress, the way we carry ourselves, and and, and, and all that, all that um, different areas of our lives. And then, how would you define, as Doctor, uh, as Doctor uh, asks, how what in the context of this discussion, how are you defining um, Christianity? Well, Christianity it means that as Christians too, we 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 are we are also people, and in terms of um, we are affected by the world what we see, we are, we are affected by culture, we are affected by experiences. And so with those things, it, it impacts the way how we behave, um, how we, we balance, find, find the balance. For instance, um, when I was younger in the church, we, we were told not to wear certain clothing, right? It's too short or it's too tight or it's too this. Because they were trying to, I guess, in the best interest, not to allow us to have this expression because it may lead to, uh, you, may, you, may, you may pronounce too much too heavily on the sexual nature of, of our being. So if that makes sense to you. So I it, it, it does. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I pressed a little bit because. I, I grew up in a Pentecostal home. I'm a third generation preacher. And there were lots of rules and regulations, taboos and so on. But I've come to realize and it's more and more reinforced in me that the reason why I'm a believer today is that during the time those rules were quote unquote given to me, they weren't given to me as a, um, we use the term nominal Christian. They were given to, I received them as a born again believer, as one who had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So that although I found them frustrating and later realized that some of the things that they told me were myths, my mm -hmm. relationship with Christ kept me centered so okay. that my, my response came based on my relationship with Christ, not just my relationship with church. Because with the okay. relation, if we're talking about a relationship with church alone, it is absolutely difficult mm. to live a certain lifestyle without um, injury to one's inner self and one's mm. personhood. But within a relationship with Christ, we can accept and do certain things that actually enhances our lives rather than oppress us. Mm. I hope I'm making sense there. Yes, yes, you are. As a matter of fact, um, by the way, folks, you listen to Yumi Radio at yumiradio.com. Um, the, the Britannica Encyclopedia defines um, sexuality is the quality or state of being sexual that's how that is you know um then uh, um, uh looked at from the britannica all right 
Now, Christianity, uh, many, many people, you know, who adopt the religious lifestyle, um, the, the Britannica Encyclopedia, um, Christianity, major religion, is stemming from a life, you know, teachings and, and depth of Jesus, of Nazareth. You know, I mean, um, if, you, if you think about it, guys, um, from looking at, looking at uh, Christianity, and look, as, as uh, Dr. Wisdom was saying, looking at, at the, the lifestyle of Christian, how then you, how do you now um, tie the two? How would you be able, are, are you able to, to for, for lack of a better word, how would you be able to have them work together in a way where it's not conflicting in, in, your, in your understanding? I, the, 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 my challenge, I guess, would be uh, similar to, I'm sorry, doctor, what is your last name? Wisdom. Your name? Dr. Wisdom? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so similar to that, I came up in uh, Church of God, uh, extremely Pentecostal, um, and there were many challenges to that growing up, especially as it relates to how and I'm my, just speaking from my own history, how the how justice was determined and ultimately meted out by the church wherein I came up, where if you had a young couple, you know, young teenagers or whatever, and they would both get pregnant, meaning the the young man had to do what he needed to do, and the young woman did what you know did what she needed to do. They would both get pregnant, but they were you know out of wedlock. In the church that I came up on, the young lady was mm -hmm. disfellowshipped mm -hmm. and he was passed out. Whereas yeah. the young man could be, you know, sat down or would be some form of discipline. But we, I found an extreme sense of prejudice or unevenness in that. And it's only in our, that's why I appreciate doctor, what you're saying in terms of what gets you, because there are many people that have turned away from the church because of their teachings or the lack of teaching right. on sexuality which is why i think doctor your initial question was so prescient in terms of are we talking about you know uh we if we're talking about christianity as a whole as a construct then mm -hmm. this conversation can become very very negative very quickly because mm -hmm. you know most of us are, are many are extremely scarred by virtue of how we came up and how we we were mm -hmm. taught however if you're talking about christianity as your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then I think the blood of Jesus and the, the you, as the, the Bible is very clear, as we draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to us. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of the times when we were browbeaten about what to wear, what not to wear, what to say, what not to say, if they would have just allowed the relationship to take hold and grow within our hearts and within our lives, nothing would have needed to be said because the spirit of God would have guides us all into truth, which would, what I've seen so many times now as a person, as a grown person where a new convert, there's no need to browbeat them about how to look because it was a very exterior, almost, you know, um, Pharisees and Sadducees kind of exterior <laughs> without really dealing with the interior construct. So I think, Doctor, you're so Keith to answer the question. If if you allow your relationship with Jesus Christ to guide you, you don't need any church to go. I mean, and I'm not saying that young people don't need counseling or older folks don't need some guidance, but we should allow the Spirit of God to do that and kind of lead some of those things to the Spirit. Yeah, you in, know, um, in, in, in some defense to the environment in which we grew up, culture had a lot to do with it. Yes. And, the, and the culture I'm talking about is that they, they were handed a set of rules. Um, when you think, for instance, in Jamaica, the Christianity that grew up, particular Pentecostal Christianity that grew up in Jamaica, came from our um, Caucasian counterparts and particularly in the realm of Christianity there was an um, a fear 
well, not only a fear, but there was a, a need, as it were, to constrain the Jamaican expression of sexuality. Um, so therefore, there were a lot of rules that were set up to constrain people so that, in other words, rather than allowing the Holy Spirit to be the quote unquote police, the rules and regulations became that. Mm -hmm. So our, for, our fathers and mothers grew up under those constraints and mm -hmm. um, feared stepping outside of those constraints that they would then quickly become unholy as though they had no ability to master their own bodies, master their own thinking, master their own minds. Um, so the rules and the regulations were there to keep everybody in check. Yeah. It was handed, handed down by the missionaries um, and swallowed hook like and sinker. For instance, uh, my research taught me that um, for although some people got saved, mm -hmm. repented, came into the church, well, before they could become a member of the church, there had to be certain things that they couldn't do. Um, for instance, um, in Jamaica, for instance, we had a lot of common law marriages and they weren't accepted um, by the missionaries. So unless, the, and particularly the woman, left the man she was with or left her husband, no matter how saved she was, no matter how filled she might be with the Holy Spirit, there was she could not be a member of the church because she would then um, bring disfavor, disgrace, whatever. Open so, reproach. Open, open reproach. reproach. <laughs> so, so their expression of sexuality and the, the rules was meant to tame, to taper down. It, um, I, I don't know if, if you see the way, and then this comes from our African heritage too, that we have a way of dancing that is very sensual. It, and, and sensual means it's our spirit. It comes from within. It's, it's just an expression of what is going exactly. on. And their intent was to tame all of that, to bring it into That's confinement, to subject it to something else. Forget that the Holy Spirit had a role in that. They became the police. And uh, and just yes. to piggyback. Oh, okay, that, so not, in other words. Go ahead. So sorry, I sorry. To, um, I just I wanted to just uh, dovetail on that. That uh, doctor is so right in the sense that these were the same former slave descendants of the same former slave masters that forbid yes. us to marry. That would literally when yes. when, when when the African slaves on the plantations, no matter what island they, when we're or in America, when they tried to, if the slave master got wind that they were that they mm -hmm. were a couple, the male or the female would immediately be sold away in order mm -hmm. to break that tradition. And so, what we find is the the construct of what we call Christianity, which is why I think. Doctor's first question was so amazing, which said, we've got to be careful of how we, because Christianity in many respects is a negative word. Mm -hmm. And it, I cannot tell you, for me, it doesn't have mm -hmm. a whole, I thank God for my relationship with Jesus Christ and, and, and you know, my Lord and my Savior, but Christianity as a whole, there are so many, there are hundreds and thousands of instances similar to as she just described, where the missionaries came back, took their puritanical approach, and yeah. once again, imposed their ethos or their morals on something that God had no intention of being subvert, subverted like that. So in one mm -hmm. sense, hundreds of years ago, we were beaten, sold, and, and stoned for trying to be married, for getting married in our own traditional ceremony. Mm -hmm. And then a few hundred years later, they come back, not as uh, co colonizers or slave owners, but very similar in terms of missionaries. And I've, I've caught and I've read it, and so many, especially our Jamaican heritage, aren't realizing that those missionaries that came, they didn't just bring Jesus Christ. There was a tremendous amount of colonialism that came along with it and servitude and mental servitude, which affects our sexuality to this very day. 
I, I think I think you, Richard. I think you make a great point because you know it's funny because I remember as a young man in church, and we were told not to wear makeup and we couldn't wear this, we couldn't wear that, and we have to watch everything about us. I mean, forget about nail polish. You kidding me? And I mean, lipstick and no way. So it's when I came to the the, the U.S. and I went to a church. I'm like, but there we're the same church, we're the same body, same headquarters. Why are they wearing that stuff and we couldn't? And I remember seeing even like people from the to the headquarters who come to our church, you know, for for a visit, like the, the main head, the main heads of, of of the state, and they and their wives here were done. You know, the nails were done. I'm saying, what, what's going on here? So expression, expression, as you were saying, for us has been clamored. It has been hampered. And of course, you know, they give us what people say is the religion. <laughs> they give us religion. But um, we know that, you know, the spirit of God, although you said what, what men meant for evil, God meant for good. And the, the spirit of God was able to even go look to all that mess and still brought us light and, 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 and so forth how to live our lives, but we see the impact of it, for sure. But like I said, the, the title of the show is, is Christian and Sex. And Christians, they're doing it in the church, they're doing it outside the church, some of, you know, and, and, and how, how do we address those things? How do we address the, the issue of, it's normal today, you know, it's, it's everyone is doing it. It seems to be the thing, you know, and a lot of people are shacking up. But so how, how, how do you, how do you, how, what would you say to those kind of uh, um, individuals or uh, mindset? Go ahead, doctor. Well, you know, you, you know, there, there, there's the two things I don't do. I don't tell people that they shouldn't have sex and I don't tell people that they should have sex. And that sounds strange. What what I do, I, I teach people how to live a life connected to Christ. Um, because we've been given this wonderful body, right? We've been given a wonderful body. And sexuality, the way we move, the way we think, the, the, the rhythm with which we, we live through life um, is, is a beautiful thing. Um, it, it makes us who we are. It gives us yeah. our, um, our, it gives us our essence. And s sexuality and spirituality actually are, are very close. One can't be sexual without being spiritual, and one can't be spiritual without being sexual. They really are the, the, the other side of the coin. Um, they're, they're very well connected. Uh, what we do with our sexuality affects our spirituality um and who we are as spiritual people will affect who we are as sexual people what you can't you don't have one without the other is what i'm saying somehow you're so, frozen there yeah. so what what i am trying to do what i try to do is to help people come to understand who they are as spiritual people and who they are as sexual people. And then from there, determine based on the word of God, what is truth. Because really, mm. if we read the word of God, we don't, I mean, we may make excuses, we may, we may do different things or say different things, but truly, if we read the word, it becomes self-explanatory. I just say that for yes. right now. So, so, so I, I, I like that, um, doctor. Um, so, Richard, I mean, I, I've, I've actually sat with Richard in the same men's group, and and he, as he had the group, he was very. One thing I ad admired about Richard is how he was very transparent, um, and how he was very candid about his own life before marriage, um, how he, what he learned, and how he was willing to open and learn, um, and grow. And I always liked the way he, he he presented himself, you know, not like he'd have it all or know it all. I didn't fall or fall many times. But I think that for, for us men was like, wow, you know, this brother here is really keeping it real. So so Richard, tell us, um, because like I said, the show is Christians and Sex. 
um, this is a medical correction, crystalline sex. And, um, you know, sometimes we're afraid to use the word sex. A lot of us are afraid to use the word sex. I know I was afraid of it many years ago. And, um, but Richard, tell us a little bit about that aspect of it um, as far as what um, Dr. Wisdom was saying. I think I, I, I'm loving just listening to, to her and the mm -hmm. wisdom that, that's being espoused. But I, we, we have the men, men's group, doctor. And one of the things that I, I've done is I, both of my, old, my two older sons, 19 and 17, have sat in those men's ministries with me as I'm, as I'm teaching. And mm -hmm. I've been very candid about my life before Christ. My life, and actually, to be honest, that's, not, that's a lie. My life in Christ, Christ. and my struggles that go along with that so let me not you know i that's one of the things that i struggled with mightily why i i didn't ever left the church but i got sick of christians because they're liars yeah. um, Talk you know, to me now. I, I get it i came i came up from a church where everyone you know i was i sinned when i wasn't saved once i got saved I stopped thinking, and I, I kept on saying, I couldn't, I couldn't be the only horny 25-year-old in the church. There's no <laughs> way that I, that, that there's no way, but I, I would struggle, and I would try to talk to even the, the men of old, and no one would be transparent. They would all lie, and I would first think that they, I, there was something wrong with me and my relationship with God. How could I be, how could I have these urges that I couldn't, I would pray for forgiveness a thousand times and I would go back and do what I was doing. And I'm like, God, I, it, this cannot be me. And it was only when I left that particular church and you, I, you start realizing as you start going, I never left God, but you start realizing that, wait a minute, mm -hmm. they were just lying. They were hypocrites and lying. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean hypocrites. I'm not saying hypocrite in the sense of their, their Christi Christianity is false. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm specifically dealing with the fact that they were unwilling to share certain aspects. And I guess I have to give them, you know, they came up in an in a era where they're, they're not supposed to share. I came up my first year when I, my formative years, the pastor, he, he and his wife were married for almost 40 years. And I don't think to this day I ever saw them kiss. I might have seen them hold hands once. So it was almost like their 10 children must have happened through immaculate conception. It certainly couldn't have been via sex because it was sexuality was so frowned on even in married couples. So my sons have heard me talk about even my infidelities in the context of my marriage. And I've been very open with them. Like, listen, I have screwed up royally and I want to be transparent enough that they understand that you can, you can screw up, you can ask God for forgiveness, and if you choose to make changes in your lifestyle, you can learn how to treat your wife properly. And all of those things, it take, but sex is integral to your Christian walk. As you said, doctor, you can't get every step we take, we can't get away from it, but the hardest thing is to separate our moorings from how what was given to us as fake Christianity from the colonizers. As I got married, I thought I was attractive to women prior to marriage, and uh, all of a sudden I realized mm. it was after I got. It was actually started once I asked my wife to marry me upon engagement. To honestly, almost this very day, the 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 you know the the advances from you know women married and single, you know certainly increased. So you know that in terms of that, but the kind of getting back to what you were mentioning, Keith, it's we we have to do a lot of unlearning before you know the church or you know or we can move forward in terms of even dealing with what what that sexuality looks like one of the things doctor that you mentioned when you said that it's not about teaching whether to abstain or not to abstain i think it's so important because um, i speak with pastors all the time and you know one, one of the one of the pastors they were they were doing pre premarital counseling for couples only to find out he didn't, he had no idea. I mean, these are the, this is a couple that was serving faithfully in his church. Wow. And I had no idea that they were living, they were getting married. Mm. And he was giving them the premarital counseling about, and they said, well, you know, Pastor, we, we've lived together the last, while well, we've been here. He said, huh? <laughs> wow. And, and so he's then challenged with, okay, what does that look like? But these are two faithful Christians that have served in his church. Wow. Here. <laughs> You know, so it kind of blows up the notion of 
how you work with that because based on how you come up in a very you know a puritanical uh, type of Christianity you know that's they should both be first removed and flogged tossed out the church then reclaimed then possibly they can get married so mm. who knows? wow who knows? so so <laughs> wow so 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 I, so I think um, hearing that 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 story I, I mean it, I think it's it's Especially these days, it's a, it's a very it's a very common thing. I think it's it's widely done um, to today. Uh, but but Richard, tell me tell me um, what would you say to your sons? I mean, you have three boys, grown grown men, um, and their walk. You know, looking back at your own youth, young youthful days, how would you how would you you know try? Or, 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 or I would say, how have you been? coaching them or trying to steer them in that direction as far as young men growing up and have to deal with women and being being uh, the safe being saved and maintain the christianity how, how have you been been dealing with that issue uh great question it really for the eldest the 19 year old it's a matter of continuing the teachings of uh what jesus christ taught and uh, make sure that he uh, carries condoms i hear you uh, so it's it's been that like like listen uh, you know what the what the word of God says. You know what we the, the the life that your mom and I would prefer for you to lead. But that being said, I don't want any children. I don't want you to have any children out of out of marriage. So, but for me to just preach a teaching on abstinence and solely abstinence without even my mother, who spoke in tongues almost every day of my life. I remember when my <laughs> the brothers were older, where you know she brought in a bowl of condoms. And said, mm -hmm. "Listen, I, you, you boys know how I've taught you about the the word and what you should do and about abstinence. But that being said, I don't want any babies mm. to marry. Here's a bowl of condoms." And she did that. I think my my old, my brothers would have been 17, 14, and I would have been eleven. And so, I mean, I haven't brought a bowl of condoms into the house, but I've certainly had that discussion with my son. Like, listen, whatever you're going to do. Make, and especially in this Me Too movement, we just had a very good discussion with them about not sleeping with any women if there's any alcohol involved, especially if you're in college. Mm -hmm. but there's another way that they're being black men and throwing them in prison. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's even a drop of alcohol involved, that's your that's your ticket. To know. But uh, but the reality but the the reality is I've I've been just I've just to be clear I've been very very clear that. If you're going to do something, make sure you're protected and make sure you're safe. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, you listen to You Me Radio. Um, here with Keith, the entrepreneur. Um, we, we're hearing some great information from uh, Richard, a uh, man of God who just um, loved life and uh, um, really, really is um, sharing some wonderful information. And I, and I hope that uh, this these kind of information will be just a beginning or an addition to what can what can happen in the future, we can dialogue more and, and, and talk about it more because I, I know I needed information. I was very ignorant. And there are times that have gotten some really serious situations, if not being for, I would say, maybe, maybe some serious Holy Ghost prayer, as some would say, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think that um, this is a great discussion. Uh, Dr. Wisdom, uh, any last words? Mm -hmm. uh, we come to the close of this uh, program here, but um, I'd like to have you to share something with us um, from this perspective? Well, one, we need to understand our bodies and how our bodies work. Um, we don't need to go through life uh, being, being afraid of, who, of our sexuality. At the same time, we need to value who we are. We need to value our sexuality. We need to value our bodies. And we need to take responsibility. Yeah. Um, it's never good enough, figuring out, uh, Pastor Smith says, it's never good enough to leave the responsibility to somebody else. You take responsibility for your own bodies. Take responsibility for what you do, for what you choose. Know that it is your choice, not someone else's choice. If it's not your choice, then it's a felony. You don't need uh -huh. to be there. You yeah. need you need to you need to own it, and you need to take responsibility to protect it, to preserve it, to honor it. Yeah. Um, Amen. Amen. And you need to know why. 
It can't be based on your mother, although your mother may give you that great advice. It's got to be based on who you know you are in Christ. Amen. And the value of your womanhood, your personhood in Christ. Um, it makes a big difference. And so what you hold on to is it um, will um, keep you through, through life because life has so many textures and changes. And even when you think you're doing everything right, something pops up somewhere, throws you off your game, takes you by surprise, and you'll find yourself in uncharted waters. Now, it's the decisions you make before you get to uncharted waters that will help you navigate mm -hmm. those Excuse unfamiliar me. places. So pay attention. Don't walk around in ignorance. Learn, read, have conversations, voice your opinions, ask your questions. Um, don't be afraid to use the word. Sex is a wonderful word. It's not a dirty word. It's a gift from God. And sexuality is too. So embrace it, but figure out who you are. Amen. And I would, I would, I would, for me, I would, I would touch on just lastly that don't allow anyone from anyone's pulpit to dictate to you mm. about things that are between you and your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. If you approach the Lord on any question, whether it's masturbation, whatever it is, and you, and you have a frank discussion with your God, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Uh, because there are, there are mm. pastors and leaders on pulpits that take licenses that are that are not theirs to take, mm. and it is up to us wow. to our own path. Mm. And I'm not saying to disregard your leader, but there, your leader has a bias, and your leader has a history, and your leader oh. your leader is also struggling with some things that will come out in the pulpit. Mm. So you've got to understand, you know. But the, when, the, when the Bible speaks about letting the wheat and tares grow together, it is not just talking about sinners in the pulpit. It is also dealing with some of the teachings that we're getting from our pastors and our leaders and knowing what to accept and what to put to the side because that's not for you. Which means that you have to know the words too. Amen. You can't be, de you can't be dependent on someone else alone to teach you. You have to read. And if, you if have you don't to say, mind, God, say it again. Say, say it again. Me. Say it again. Yes, yeah, say it again, say it again, said, please say it again. You can't depend on one, any one other person to teach you the word. You have to pick up the Bible and read and say, Holy Spirit, teach me, help me to understand, talk to me through this. Because once we have that personal connection, we will know how to be. Yes, amen, amen. I, I love it. I... Keith, you got frozen. You got frozen, okay. But I, I love what you just said there. I absolutely love what you just said there, uh, Doctor. That, that's yes. powerful. Because it's, it's so amazing how there, there, are, there are leaders, and the, even the best of leaders and the good leaders with good intent. Lost them again. Lead, lead people astray. Okay, we're freezing up. Got it. I think right, we've well, lost Keith well, again. Yeah, yeah, uh -oh. but I've got to. Yeah, I've got to get to a couple of different things. So it was a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure meeting you, and yeah. I know that we haven't even really scratched the surface. The on surface, this, so yeah, not, not we'll at all. See if I, we need to revisit. <laughs> God bless. This was certainly a wonderful, wonderful show. I, I really appreciate you, um, Mr. Richard Smith and Dr. Wisdom for your words of uh, enlightenment, um, for your transparency, um, and for your candidness. I think that uh, those who are listening will definitely uh, have something to talk about and think about. Um, I, for one, learn some stuff too, you know? We all learn in this life. Learning never stops, and learning should never stop. I, I, like, I like what, uh, Minister Richard said, in the, uh, as he spoke and he talked about his son, I believe I'd ask him, um, having three boys, how do you, you know, na have to navigate them and probably give them the wisdom as a dad and, you know, as them being young men in the church, how do you pretty much uh, advise them or, you know, you know, help them to 
think about their own sexuality and being a Christian. And you said something that was very important. You said, listen, hey, make sure you get a condom, just in case. That was kind of a little shocking to me. Uh, but I do get it because we're in a world where kids, you know, it, the, the, the sexual revolution is very, very powerful and kids do engage uh, with it once, twice or whatever it is. But protection is a very important part. I believe that he was saying uh, that's necessary because you don't want to have an unwanted pregnancy. You don't want to have a child uh, unprepared. So I thought it was a very interesting point that he brought out. Uh, Dr. Wisdom, uh, she basically uh, struck a very important uh, chord as well because she talked about the rules and the regulation that she grew up in and, and how she had to navigate herself and how, to, how she had to actually um, uh, get to know her and, and, and kind of, I would say, let the Bible define her and not people or um, those around you who quote unquote have leadership over you. Um, she basically uh, basically said some very important things. Uh, she, she really, really touched on some um, important um, um, elements as far as, um, as far as people need to be more open and, and, and people need to be a little more uh, uh, transparent. And I thought those were very, very important um, things to, to bring out. So again, guys, this was a great, great, great segment. I enjoyed myself. Uh, we're here at Yumi Radio. And guys, you can send your emails in, your responses to what you've heard. Uh, you may have some questions. You may have some comments. Feel free to send it in. Uh, and we'll definitely, uh, definitely will, will, uh, love to hear from you. So again, thanks for listening on in. And you take care. God bless. I could speak with the tongues of men and angels. Christians and sex. Join me, Keith, weeknights at 9 p.m. Channel Express on paper. For thought-provoking conversations on Christianity and sexuality. Let's talk about it. Why not? Enrich your love life by ensuring your Christian lifestyle is blooming. My unconditional lover, you're my Engaging, stimulating, and biblical. Love is